Hello everyone, it's Benny here, and in this video, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be explaining how this big monstrosity of redstone can possibly be doing any form of math at all. So, let's go ahead and get started by first off, clearing our inputs. So, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to divide this across a couple of videos because there's no way I can explain this entire thing in a single video, so... In this video, what I'm going to do is I'm j just going to explain the input section. So I'm going to draw this sort of invisible line right here. Everything to this side of the line will be explained in this video, and everything on this side of the line will be explained in a later video. This is also really nice because Everything on the side of the line just happens to deal with input, and everything on this side of the line just happens to deal with the actually, you know, doing the math. So, it ends up working out pretty nicely. So let's go ahead and get started. So, our, how on earth does input in this calculator work? Well, first off, let, you should probably take a step back and just look at what do you need your input to do. And well, the idea is pretty simple. When you're doing math, you have two numbers, A and B. You can do A over A plus B, A minus B, A times B, or A divided by B. At least that's the idea of this calculator. And, you know, so we're obviously going to need number A and number B. So, uh, the inputs, our input system needs to be able to take that number, first off, needs to be able to convert it into binary so our calculator can actually do math with it, and second of all, it needs to remember it as either input A or as input B, which, and the one we're going to ha have it sent to will be controlled by this lever. So, how on earth could this possibly work? Well, the way I see it is that there's two different tasks. First, we need to convert the number to binary, then we need to store it as either input A or input B. So, I'm going to draw another invisible line right here, Everything on this side of the line deals with converting it to binary, and everything on this side of the line deals with sending it as either input A or input B. Alright, no one lost yet? Okay, good. So, this thing that's right here, this is the binary converter. It takes whatever number you put in, and it turns it into the binary equivalent. And you will probably understand this a little bit better if you understand binary, so... If you haven't already seen it, I suggest looking at my um, Building a Minecraft Computer series, video number 3, which has a very basic explanation of what binary is, and that should give you at least an idea of, you know, binary. And I'll probably help you understand this a little bit better. So here's how this works. Whenever I push a number, it, it will send whatever the binary equivalent is along these four wires right here. So, now, the way hey, I do accomplish the converting it to binary thing is, well, every time I push the button, you'll notice that it turns off this wire. And you'll notice that if there's a redstone torch on a wire that has power, then it turns off. But as soon as the wire turns off, then the torch turns on. So this provides a very convenient system, because I can place torches over top of the wire wherever I want a 1 in the binary, and that will turn on whenever I hit the button. So whenever I hit the button, it will give me that number in binary. So I just place torches where there's 1s in binary, and no torch where there's a 0 in binary. That's sort of the way this converts it to binary. So, for example, 9. 9 has is one zero zero one in binary, so there's one zero zero one. When I press this, it'll turn off that, and then the power of the two ones, and that gives me a one zero zero one in binary, which is nine again. So, I'm actually, going to put in zero just to clear our input. That's actually binary conversion is that simple. I, it's no fancy redstone trickery. It's just torches. I have two floors of this. Now you might be wondering how I end up combining these together, and it's actually not that bad. Let's just send power through like this. So you'll see it goes through, 
and yeah, so if it's bottom, it goes through by going, powering this. And since power is going here, it will trigger those repeaters. And again, same story up here. Power goes down, and etc. So, combining is not that hard, but worth explaining anyways. So now, let's talk about saving the number uh, as either input A or input B. And this sort of has three different parts working for it. First off, right here, we have the, these two sort of things right here. This thing and this thing. These are sets of D flip flops. If you want to know more about D flip flops, look at video 6 and 7 of my Building a Minecraft Computer tutorial series. And, and all a D flip flop is, is it will store either a 0 or a 1, and will store that value indefinitely. And, of course, it will end up coming out in this torch. So, these are not. Well, I shouldn't say that they're easy, but, you know, they're not that complicated once you understand them. That, but they're their own topic, that's why I have videos on them. So I have both input A and input B. The way they have it set up is, the inputs are coming in along this wire, and I'm just send. what I'm doing is I'm inverting it and sending it down. So, for each um, individual digit, then... I'm just sending that value into the D flip flop. And I'm actually sending it the um the value that goes along the wire into both D flip flops. And the reason I'm doing this is because the D flip flop has a write command and it will not actually save the value unless that wire is receiving power. So if the write command doesn't actually have any power, then it's completely ignored. So the final thing that leaves is actually saving. And it's basically anytime you had to input a number, you'll want it to save as either input A or as input B. And this device right here, this will determine whether it sends as input A or input B. If this wire is not receiving power right here, it will send it to input A. And if this it wire is receiving power, then it sends it to input B. Now, it will not actually save anything unless this wire is receiving power right here. And the way we determine if this wire receives power is if rain turns off, is if this wire is turned on. And this turns on every single time you press a button. So, every time you press a button, it will go into here. And it will go either th this way if it's input A, and this way if it's input B. And this might seem like a little bit of a weird thing, but it's actually not that bad. What happens is this wire, it goes into two places, here and here. But this one is inverted. And the way this ends up working is that this wire right here is powering two inverters, and this right here is the actual output of the um, of this thing, which I just call a transistor because I don't have a better name for it. And essentially each of these segments works like an AND gate, but only one end of the AND gate can ever be true because of the invert thing. So, for example, if this one, this part is off, th so anytime I send power through here, then this will invert, that will turn off, and that will make this church or to turn on. So it works like an AND gate. But of course, if this wire was on, then that would not turn off. Is that would not turn on because this would still have power. So that's how writing to A and writing to B, same story. It's inverted right now, so if this turned off, then this will not turn on. But if I have power going through here, then this will turn off, which means that this turns on. And yeah, and there, this wire of course turns off both of those, and that's you know more or less the way this works. And you know, that might not be the best explanation, but it's really hard to give a good explanation of how this works, so I suggest just building it on your own and experimenting with it, and it should make a little bit more sense like that. So um, the only mystery you may be one still have is why on earth these have four ticks of delay. So the reason these do have 
delay is because... Actually, it's because of saving. The reason is, you want the right command to turn off before the value goes away. Because, I mean, you're just hitting a button, the value's going to go away eventually. Because if the value goes away while it's still writing, then it's just going to write whatever's there, which would be a zero. Because, you know, the value will be gone. So, the reason for this delay is simply so that this goes through a little bit slower than the write command, so that the write command will turn off before the actual numbers turn off. And that's more or less the way the input system works. I'm sorry that I don't have a big analogy system for this, but, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have an analogy for it. It's it's input. It, it's, it is what it is, I guess. So, you know, thank you. I hope you understand the way the input system works a little bit better now. So, oh yeah, in the next video we'll start talking about how the rest of this calculator works and how it can actually do math. So thank you, and I will see you in the next video.